All right, so a really common problem I'm seeing in uh, student layouts in LucidPress is you've put together a uh, little call-out quote or an image could do the same thing um, in the midst of your columns, and it's breaking up the alignments. So the problem here is that um, we have this kind of little bits of text there. Uh, more importantly, though, we've got this big square, um, and it doesn't fit in the grid that you've made with the other line. So there's two simple fixes. Um, one is to make this just fit the whole width of the column like that. Um, if you're doing it that way, you may well want to add a rule so that it's clear that this um, is not part of the other text. So the way you do that is you select the text and then here under horizontal rules you're going to add a top and a bottom rule we can match the color of the text um, that looks a little bad because there's no padding by default so let's add six points of padding on either side and now that fits with the grid uh, and again if you had a couple of these you might make them kind of symmetrical or um, you could align them. That looks a little funny, perfectly aligned. You might align the bottom with the baseline of the others. You can create some kind of grid with them um, if you've got more than one call out like this, or you might um, create a rhythm to it. You can a lot of different ways to do it. So the other way to do it, if if let's just hit undo a few times, get back to our original. Um, so if you wanted that, oops, just gave away where I was going. If you wanted that kind of asymmetrical effect, um, it helps to add some irregularity to it. So if what you want to do is create a shape that doesn't fit the grid, make it more intentional that it's breaking the grid. So for example, um, most obviously you could throw a circle in. Um, we can grab all this text, Command C to copy, Command V to paste it in here. Um, I can paste it in the circle and now get the circle about the right size to fit it nicely. Because it's in a circle, I probably want to center it. Get rid of that box. Oops, this is a little bit... whatever, that's fine. And now go to Layout, Text Wrapping On. Notice it wraps as a square by default, which is annoying. Wrap tightly and now it will wrap as a circle. So now it feels kind of intentional. Now a circle with a border looks pretty ugly, um, but we can change that under shape. So let's get rid of the border and let's put some kind of fill color behind. So if we've got a bright red, that's a little too Christmassy. Eh, it could work actually if you do a really light green. Um, so with a complementary color there, we could go with a related color. We could just do a light shade of red like that. Um, for a monochrome scheme, lots of ways you could use the color there. Um, yeah, actually, I'd like to go even lighter than that. So let's try. Yeah, that's pretty good. A nice light pink like that. And now maybe darken up the text a little bit. Beautiful. So now. Um, that's going to look a little bit more professional. It's, it's clear that what I'm trying to do, and even if I place this in funny spots, I'll show you what I could do with this now. This can now really clearly and intentionally break the grid. I could even have the last one you know, look like that or something. Um, let's see, it might be awkward to make the text. Huh, that's tricky. Um, but you could imagine see this now even though they're um, even though they're not squares it feels intentional and like I'm trying to create this design as opposed to like an accident um, you could also do other shapes if you wanted to have some sort of a God knows why you would do this but one could imagine a reason um, Maybe you want to have a uh, information here, and we 
paste our, oops, let's grab our text again, command, paste it in. Um, once again, borders tend to look pretty ugly. Let's fill it instead, our light pink, and let's wrap it, wrap it tight. And we can get some kind of fun effects using the wrapping like that. So there are ways to um, break the grid, but what's nice is rather you don't really want to break the grid with a square. Typically, if, if what you're doing is squares, it should fit the grid. If you're going to break the grid, make it clear you're breaking it intentionally and that it's not a mistake. Um, the last thing I might do is justify all this to make it since I have all these circles breaking this up now, I want it to be a little cleaner so I can justify and turn hyphenation on. Oops, turn hyphenation back on. I'll get some nice cleaner lines. So now the break is much more intentional. And you can see how a page like this is clearly intentionally breaking a grid as opposed to that awkward grid break we had when we started. Um, by the way, the revision history is kind of awesome in Lucid Press. They just have these little things. So let's see if we can see now. Oops. Go back. Here's the awkward. Oops. Awkward break that we started with. Here's a um, intentional break. It's somewhere in the middle here. We should have. Uh, oops. Let's go. Nope. my Christmas colors. There is the uh, simple keep it within the grid options. So all viable options you just have to uh, make sure that whatever you do you're doing it on purpose. Alright that concludes this brief Lucid Press tutorial.